Kieran. I like the idea of a smaller number of more capable teams, and that makes sense. And I, you know, in the team world and office concept makes make sense too. Um, but 27 is very close to a very familiar number of 28 <laughs> networks, I think, etc. And um, not really asking a structural question. How, how are we going to make sure that the ways of working, the culture, is truly different? That engagement of public patients, patient organisations, <coughs> health and wellbeing boards, CCGs, that, that on the ground is, is really going to be imbued from the start. Because it, you know, there's a huge amount of work just to get the structure right. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a risk as, as ever that the structure will be perfect, but then we'll have to catch up and everything else. I think it's a really important point, and I think anybody who um, uh, is, is trying to see the old system recreated in the new is missing quite a, an important set of points. These are completely different organisations with different functions and um, consequently uh, a, a different set of relationships and ways of working. I think if we compare the, uh, uh, the local area teams with um, their predecessor SHAs and PCTs, um, if you think about the functions, you'll see that they necessarily need to work in a different way. So perhaps picking a couple of examples there to illustrate the point. Um, I talked before about the relationship with clinical commissioning groups. This is a more devolved system. This is not about a, um, a hierarchical system where the local area team um, of the commissioning board um, is there to um, second guess clinical commissioning and um, to tell it what to do. It is absolutely there as part of an accountability relationship, but in many ways that is um, uh, absolutely uh, not the prime focus. The prime focus is one of development, support, and frankly, partnership on the big strategic issues that face the population that is served by those CCGs and by the area team. So if I think about how it would work on uh, a health and wellbeing board, for instance, because the same arguments apply to our partnership with local government, um, it, this is about us having a capability to work alongside as equals um, local authorities and CCGs to contribute our role around specialised commissioning into that debate and our role around um, looking at outcomes as opposed to, um, uh, and this is a caricature to prove a point, um, a more directive um, set of relationships based on a hierarchy. And I think we're trying to engineer that in at all levels through the recruitment process um, and making clear that we're setting something different, but it's actually useful to have an opportunity to discuss it in this forum because I think it's also something that we all need to communicate in our uh, daily work really so I think we're, we're building something different um, we are uh, recruiting on that basis and uh, we are clear that the success or failure of this depends upon those relationships and that way of working going forward I have to say the initial signs are very positive and conversations that we're having with CCG leaders and others um, give a sense that we've got a shared vision on much of how this would work so I'm optimistic it'll, it'll transpire very well Bill thanks Jim but just to reinforce the point that Ian's made, uh, we've been talking to local governments nationally quite a lot about um, our relationship and how we can work together. And um, I think they'll really welcome uh, the commitment we're giving to have the, the, the right level of seniority yeah. and impact in the area offices so that we can play a really prominent and important role on health and wellbeing boards. I think there's a real appetite and excitement to make health and wellbeing boards the place where clinical commissioning groups and local authorities and ourselves <coughs> or our area offices can, can come together to listen to local communities and patient groups really understand what matters most to them to focus on the outcomes that need addressing most locally and the groups who are getting left behind and therefore need that concerted action and, and the, the health and wellbeing board is the place where we can really integrate some of the uh, the commissioning work and really collaborate on you know superb provision i think is is an idea that local authorities are really getting quite excited about so i'm sure they're going to welcome this commitment David, I, can re I mean, I reinforce that because, in a sense, inevitably, when you're talking about organisational structure, you kind of start at the top, you kind of work mm. at regions, and all that, you think a bit like that. And I, and, uh, I perfectly understand why we have to do that, because that's the, kind of the nature of the discourse that we have. But I just reinforce this thing about how different ah. this is and how determined, I guess, we all are to make it different. 
And if you start off, as Bill says, with the local community, the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment, the Health and Wellbeing Board, thinking about what the health needs of the population are, and you've got local government there, you've got the clinical commissioning groups there, and you've got the area teams of the of the uh, commissioning board there discussing and working through what the response to those health needs are. Um, you see a different pattern, I think a different picture emerges about what we do. So uh, Ian's absolutely right, for some of those circumstances the, 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 the area director or, or, the, or whoever's there for the area team would be holding <coughs> the clinical commissioning groups for, to account for some of the things that they need to do. But similarly they'd be holding us to account for the commissioning of primary care, the commissioning of of, um, of specialised services. So you can see that mutual accountability building up, and I think that's a much more healthier way of seeing how this could work, this mutual accountability and partnership at a local level. If I think you, you're driven to try to, to draw a diagram which has commissioning board area team there, <coughs> clinical commissioning groups underneath in a sort of line, you completely miss the point of what we're trying to create here. Now, that is not just... That is a cultural set of issues. That's a, the, 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 the nature of the leadership we're going to have, the way we're going to build these things. That is a fundamental change in the way that we work. work. And I think that's the right way to do it. We just have to be absolutely determined because there'll be all sorts of pressures on us to kind of move away from it inevitably. There'll be lots of expectations laid on to us to do it, but we need to keep really firm to that vision, I think. Yeah. So, so I agree with that, and I think it has direct implications as we go through the recruitment process. You know, my, my aim is to... Um, go out to recruitment for the local area team directors <coughs> in the second half of this month because we need to get on with that then to to build the bespoke structures in each of those areas that will work for those geographies um, and I think what we need to be able to create are multidisciplinary teams in the local areas that can be the board for all those different conversations that the board needs to have locally what we don't need I think is a situation where we make it so complex that people feel they have to talk to different bits of the board, talk to the centre of the board and the rest of it. I, I want this to work at the local level for a team of clinical and general managers, professionals um, working there, interacting with all the partners as part of the local setup. That partnership model based on you know highly credible people with high level leadership skills um, working into all the issues locally feels like it's our best chance of making the sort of matrix structure that I think we're all committed to across the board actually real in the local area. If we can pull that off, and I'm determined that we do, um, then I think we can collectively as a board great, gain great confidence that we'll be having the right conversations and potentially having the right influence out there across the country. Good. So that's sort of reinforcing very much that, that structure is one thing, but it's what we do and how we do it um, collectively that, that is yeah. the most important aspect yeah. of, 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 of that. Can I just um, ask one question? You talk about co-producing the the final design um, <coughs> collectively with um, your regional directors, the SHAs, PCT, CCGs. Uh, I mean, can you confirm that, that part of that would also be bringing Jane and Bruce and, and, and Paul in to demonstrate the operation of the, the matrix going from, from their roles through into your structure? Yes, I think that the matrix is built in at every um, bit of our structure. I mean, it's really important, and probably I should have mentioned this earlier. I mentioned it to the staff meeting earlier last week. Um, the operations directorate is not in any way, despite its relative disproportionate size, an organisation within an organisation. It's a reflection of that multidisciplinary working that we as a group of directors are trying to create at all levels in the organisation. So while managerially um, there'll be an accountability um, through you know, a, a line in the operations directorate, the professional links between the nursing professionals, the medical professionals, the finance professionals, with directors around this table and their people at the centre, locks us together really and I think builds on the best um, opportunity, best multidisciplinary working that currently exists. So at each level that matrix will be replicated and you know, I will expect that that clinical leadership will run from top to bottom in the organisation. Thank you Bruce, you want to say that Jane, you know. Okay. Thank you and um, may I just say Ian and I have discussed this at some length over the course of the last few weeks and we see a fantastic opportunity in the team structure that, that Ian's trying to put together to create um, opportunities for medical colleagues that want to join the board to have far more interesting and focused uh, jobs. So in the current structures, PCTs would have medical directors who would be expected to be 
uh, experienced in, in a wide range of different areas. Um, and what we want to avoid in, in the new uh, structure is people being um, sort of jacks of all trades <coughs> and, and master of none. So we see an opportunity here to, to bring in people to work in the teams whose specific jobs may be to focus on revalidation or quality of primary care or focus on quality in secondary care um, and to be able to distribute the statutory responsibilities um, amongst individuals in a way which I think pays most attention to their own skills and brings the maximum opportunity to, to the board. And I think I would reinforce that and Neil I've had <coughs> also had quite a lot of conversations about this and I do think it's a really exciting opportunity to absolutely demonstrate that what we talk about when we mean when we talk about matrix working we actually can deliver and talking to staff um, out in, in the service at the moment and about their future. They are, actually, they are really excited about the opportunity, many of them are really excited about the opportunities this brings. And when we think about um, areas like the outcome framework and the different domains and how we can thread a lot of that work around, for example, in the nursing field around patient safety, patient experience, out through those um, operational lo local teams, huge opportunities and a really good way of, uh, of demonstrating that we will actually deliver what we do. Thank you. I think that's a very good um, debate. So, so thank you very much, Ian, and, and again, um, commend um, you on the progress. And look forward to really the next steps of this, which is, is locking the, 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 the next stages in, doing the recruitment, and reinforcing the point that, that David made about ways of working as people come on, on, on board, both personally in their interaction with, with other parts of the system, but also the way in which our own matrix um, operate. So we absolutely, I think, um, the board commends thank the you. work today. So, so thank you very much. Well, that brings us to uh, the end of, of formal items. Is there any other business that uh, uh, board colleagues would like to, to raise? No. Well, with that, uh, thank you very much. The date of the next meeting is the 19th of July, and um, uh, this meeting has been held in Birmingham uh, as part of our commitment to, to move periodically around the country. Uh, the next meeting will be back in Leeds, um, but perhaps over the summer we'll find a location um, beyond Leeds for another board meeting. Can I thank you for all the hard work uh, done by the executive uh, team on behalf of the board and look forward to the further progress um, in the uh, relatively short period of time we have um, going forward. So thank you very much and I think we have the opportunity to uh, have a coffee outside with, with members of the public. So with that, I close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.